Hello everyone and welcome back to Tech Horizon. My name is Dave and today I'm going to show you how to overclock your Retro Pi. This is especially useful if you want to get as much power out of your Pi as possible to make the games run a lot smoother. In this video I'm going to go over the best overclocking options for the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B Plus and the Raspberry Pi 4 depending on which you've installed Retro Pi on. A quick note, if you're planning on overclocking your own Raspberry Pi, you'll definitely need some sort of active cooling. A simple heatsink won't do the job. I highly recommend you use the Geek Pi aluminium case with an included CPU fan, which I've taken a look at in one of my previous videos, or some sort of similar case with active cooling, or even the new ice tower, which will keep the Pi absolutely chilly while you are 2 GHz. And by the way, you're following this tutorial at your own risk and I won't be responsible for any damage. Now enough with the warnings and let's get straight into it. First of all, you'll have to remove the microSD card with RetroPi installed on it from your Raspberry Pi and plug it into your PC. Note that you might need an SD card reader. Then you'll have to download a special notepad called Notepad++ that allows you to modify the microSD card's content. And before you ask, no, this won't work with a standard notepad. You can download Notepad++ by clicking on the link in the description below or by visiting notepad++.org. After installing it, open your file explorer and click on the microSD card that you've inserted earlier. In my case, it's called boot. Then go down to the text file named config and right click it. Now open it up using the previously installed notepad++. Once you've done that, scroll down to arm frequency. If you're doing this on a Raspberry Pi 4, you'll be able to overclock it to 2 GHz. And to do so, you're going to have to quickly delete this and replace it with the following. The commands are listed in the description below so that you can copy and paste them. If your Raspberry Pi is starting to overheat too much, you can simply lower the CPU frequency a little. Now for the ones out there using a Raspberry Pi 3, 3B or 3B+, you won't be able to overclock your Pi to as high as 2 GHz, but at least you're getting a bit of extra power out of it. The Raspberry Pi 3 can be overclocked to a maximum of 1.3 GHz, while the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus can be overclocked to just around 1.45 GHz. Overall, that's still a decent gain for such a small single board computer. I've listed all of the different commands that you'll need for each Raspberry Pi model in the description below, so that it's just a matter of copying and pasting. Once you've done that, go ahead and save the text document in order to apply the changes, and then simply close it. After that, eject the microSD card and plug it back into your Pi and boot it up. Now your retro Pi should be successfully overclocked and you should get less lag and more power out of your Pi when playing games. But apart from this, that will be it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I was able to help you out. If you're interested in accessing your Pi remotely or even installing different operating systems on it, just go ahead and check out my previous videos. And if this video helped you out, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see straight to the point tech related videos and tutorials just like this in the future, you're welcome to subscribe. See you in the next one.